Uh, there are a lot of components inside a vacuum that are really useful for building machine tools and uh, other things that can be useful in a workshop. We're going to start this by taking this one apart really quickly and I'll show you what's in there and then I'll show you some of the uh, what I think are pretty cool machines that I've made with it. So let's get started. All right, so real quick review of uh, what we actually recovered. Here's the vacuum motor itself. And we'll look at this some more here in a little bit. The uh, wire was cut, but there is a what appears to be a functional switch. Uh, I mean, it appears to be functional. It's clearly a switch. <laughs> there is uh, the casing itself, which I want to preserve this part because this is molded specifically to fit the motor. So I can take my bandsaw, cut off this piece, and then I just need to make a wooden base to support this level. And then now I've got a machine base for my motor. So I'll keep this component, cut off the parts I don't need. I've got an eight millimeter shaft and um, so that's good. Here are the roller bearings from the brush. And these are in excellent condition. So those would be good. And I've got the rubber belt, oh, there it is. So, um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this, but I'm gonna keep it for a little while. And now I've also got plans to build a pump. Actually, that's what I wanna do with this, because hey, if a vacuum can pump air, which is a fluid, how about pumping water? So anyway, that may or may not be a future video. I don't know, it depends on how it works out. See this vacuum tucked way back in the corner here. It happens to be plugged in to this guy. And that basically is an electronic switch, which is controlled over here. So now let me show you how this is used. Um, if you watched any of my previous videos, you've seen my table saw here. Right. We won't talk too much about how this works in this video, but what I will, you will see that there's a vacuum hose. And that vacuum hose runs back to the wall and over to that guy. So once I open it up, clean the filter, and emptied out the hose, it worked just like a brand new vacuum cleaner. So now what I do, I pull my table saw off, uh, I lift it up, I don't wanna do that right now, holding the camera, and then push this button. And you can see the vacuum running. So now I've got essentially a shop vac hooked up directly to my table saw and it costs nothing except maybe the cost of that um, remote switch. Uh, I made this out of frustration one day. I was tired of all the dust and coughing and stuff in the shop and I had this little cheap shop vac and I said, there's got to be a better way. Um, household vacuums, which I had several at the time just sitting around, have a cyclone in them. I decided I would enhance this cheap shop vacuum with the cyclone from a household vacuum. So essentially the way it works is this guy is creating all the suction. There's no power here, but the air is being pulled through the cyclone first. So there's the hose just laying on the floor. The, um, everything is sucked up through there. I can take that tip off, hook it up to one of my machine tools. The uh, dust is sucked through this uh, PVC pipe. As you can see it's just duct taped on and then there's some epoxy to uh, seal it up nice and tight on the vacuum side. Now I've got another example over here from a different vacuum that I found and you can see the cyclone the, it basically causes the air to swirl around and then it the heavier dust and dirt drops down into the canister. And so for a vacuum cleaner that's pretty much the end stage the air then goes up through the vacuum and you get mostly clean air after it's gone through a filter going through the motor itself. And so this is essentially two stages. Mostly clean air comes through here 
and then it goes through the filter inside of here and then basically no dust is in the bucket and all the fine dust is captured after going through both filters. We're looking at my scroll saw. Uh, there is a video about that which I'll post the link right here if you want to see that video. So I won't describe this too much except you may have noticed, hey Jeremy, it doesn't look like a vacuum motor and uh, you would be exactly right. That is from a treadmill and uh, it's quieter, a little bit more horsepower, although actually the power wasn't a problem. The point I want to make is if you watch that other video, you will see that there's actually a vacuum motor that was mounted on a housing here. Uh, I'll quickly tell you about the other changes. You don't have to watch the video to get all the details about this, but this comes from blowing up an air mattress. Uh, I no longer have that air mattress, but that thing really puts out a lot of air, so that powers my dust blower. And then I've added this component, which essentially increases the depth horizontally of this top section. Uh, primarily, I had vibration uh, in this direction, especially at higher speeds. But by increasing the depth in, that, in the direction of the vibration, it actually quieted this top section down and uh, it, it doesn't vibrate so much. So also using vacuum motors, I made a one inch uh, belt sander. And this is the motor that was in that guy. I have since upgraded that one as well. But there's a whole video on that, which I'll post right here, right right there. But these are all vacuum motors that were found on the side of the road. And um, some of them have been used in projects and then recycled back out to be used for other things, mostly for experimentation. I want to show you some tools that you may need if you want to start doing this. So this guy, um, you can use this, you'll plug it in and then plug in your device through this and it'll tell you how many amps uh, or how much watts being used. Uh, you can switch back and forth and see both, get an idea how much power you're pulling. So this is a potentiometer and you can use this to dial up or to increase or decrease the resistance to the flow of electricity. And that's just simply going to make it easier or harder for the motor to run and you use that to control the speed. So this is a tachometer and it only gives you an average. It doesn't tell you like the instantaneous RPMs. Of course, a uh, multimeter is good. Uh, you can use this to measure continuity. Anyway, uh, there you are. We're gonna go ahead and plug in this guy so you can get an idea of how I normally test the motor. Okay, I've got my hear hearing protection ready because this is about to be pretty loud. Anybody who started a vacuum knows they're loud, but with all the casing and plastic removed, it's going to be much louder. Uh, my potentiometer, I mean my tachometer is ready to go. I've got my amp reading ready. I've got my little indicator, which hopefully it doesn't come flying off because this thing is going to be spinning pretty fast. And there's your vacuum impeller. When I was building my scroll saw, uh, this motor would get really hot, um, uh, dangerously hot. In fact, it was smoking. And um, I even showed that at the end of the previous video. But what I decided to do to alleviate that problem of the motor overheating was I installed a fan right behind it just to blow cool air over it. Uh, this one comes out of a microwave, but any kind of fan would work. I don't remember where I got this one from. I think I got it out of an old computer or uh, some other machine that had this forced air fan. Um, this one puts out a nice uh, concentration of air. So you could also use a fan like this. Again, you don't really have to purchase one. You could find one. Um, a lot of things are thrown away because their primary function doesn't work, but then they have components inside uh, that still work. So this one, this one really puts out a lot of air. So anyway, you're definitely going to need a fan if you're going to use a vacuum motor for your machines to keep it cool. So I thought while I was at it, I would uh, talk about some other motors that I've got that I have. Um, you've already seen one treadmill motor, which is on my scroll saw. This guy right here comes from a wood chipper and again, found it on the side of the road. Thought, man, that's got a, it has a plug hanging off of it, so it must be electric. And I got it home and it turns out the blade was really dull and I think that's why they threw it away. It just wasn't chipping anymore. It has a start capacitor um, and you need this in order to get the motor to start turning. 
and then it'll drop out of the circuit and the motor will just run from there. Um, it's always interesting learning about these types of things. I'm not an expert, uh, just doing research on my own. I learned how all these parts function and there's a switch. I always try to keep as many of the components as I can until I know what they all do. This is a treadmill motor and you'll see that it's direct current, not alternating current or AC, it's DC. And that's important because it means you're gonna need a bridge rectifier and I have one. So this is what it looks like. Um, you're gonna need a rectifier to turn AC power from the wall into DC so that you can run it. And again, you can look up full bridge rectifier and learn more about that and how that functions. This one comes out of an electric lawnmower. And I recovered this and saw that the battery was bad and those batteries are pretty expensive so I just chunked it. But that's what this did. So I took all the lawnmower components off and again, I, I kept all the electronics for charging the thing and um, getting it powered. I'm probably going to use a bridge rectifier also for this. And so I can run it with AC current. But again, that's the beauty of these guys and all the tools I mentioned before so that you can learn about the equipment you have before you just plug it up and, you know, tear up a machine you just made. So anyway, hopefully this video was helpful and uh, post any questions or comments below.